Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number three between QPad and Empire. Let's unpause in three, two, one, go. And wow, when I, as soon as I unpaused, I just heard this giant echo sound that indicates probably that this is the last match between these two teams in this particular series. And Empire already up one nothing in the group stages. The series is tied up one to one. QPad, this is their first ever official series, and so far they looked. Decent, but in game two they showed a weakness of the draft and their lanes. We'll see if they can rectify in this game. Yeah, on the whole, um, I think they're playing pretty well, but they're still suffering from that uh, newish team sort of uh, syndrome, where a player might make a mistake uh, just in terms of execution and go in and think his team's behind him and they aren't, or you know, just little things that over the course of a game kind of add up. So looks like they will ban Bat Rider. So no bat in this game. So Cupad had the first pick. Again, I think they'll try to leave Wisp in the pool because Mini is really, really strong at Wisp. So I imagine Empire will probably ban the Wisp right there because I'm sure they played against... I'm sure these two teams have scrimmed against each other a decent amount of times. So Wisp is going to be removed from the pool. And the question is now, I imagine they don't want to give Scandal Darks here. And I don't think Cupad is the kind of team that will first pick up Darks here. Especially for... I mean, Select is probably a really, really strong Darks here, but... I mean, I imagine in the early game team fights where Empire wants to be going at you very aggressively, it's going to be a little bit outside Select's comfort zone at this point. So I have to think that Qpad going to probably ban the Darkster here. Oh, that's, you know what, I like to see a team do that. When they ban something, that's just not a standard ban, it's not an S tier pickup, but it's a tier that the, you know the enemy team utilizes and you don't. So say, hey, you know what, let's just get rid of this hero. We're not going to pick him. If they pick him, it's going to be scary, so why not? So, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm close enough. They're both purple, and that's all that really matters. So basically, I'm still right, because Bane and Darks are essentially the same thing. It's really the same hero. Anyway, I'm probably going to move out Chen, so he's left in the pool. Keep it the light, Nyx, and Kunkka for Q-Pad, but I imagine they won't pick it up first pick because it's not been banned out, and I don't think Empire really have a Kunkka strategy, but I think if Q-Pad want to win their, their first series ever, they have to go with their strongest picks. They need to pick up Kunkka, in my opinion. Yeah, a lot of times what happens is once you get to be known as a team that runs weird picks, uh, they, teams start banning those heroes against you. Remaining. And at this point in the game, or at this point in their career, uh, I should say, remaining. they don't really have that status as the, you can't let them get Kunkka yet. So why not do that until other teams are forced to ban it against you, right? Yeah, that's an interesting direction that those taken. I seen more teams refer to banning out heroes that teams are comfortable with rather than heroes that are overall very powerful. But Cupid going to pick up the Nyx Assassin, going to leave Cupid Light as well as Darkstar left in the pool. So I imagine Empire going to pick up Cupid Light for Go Black. And maybe not Darkstar, he might not be fitting in that well with Empires. They might want to get a hero that pairs up nicely with the Keeper of the Light and really try to secure their safe lane. May Shadowdemon could be a viable option. And also, getting a Shadowdemon would take away Shadowdemon from Cupad, which I'm sure they'd love to get their hands on. I'd coddle Peel right now. I'd do it. I have no shame. Um, <laughs> I don't bastard. think it's just good at breaking bases, so I feel like that's a fairly decent opening. And then. Dark Seer is going to be left in the pool, so Cupad will really be forced into that because you don't want to give away also a Dark Seer on top of that. So I think by picking up PL Coddle, you force them into taking Dark Seer, which doesn't necessarily benefit them. Uh, and frankly, I don't think that. I don't know if Cupad's good enough, frankly, to take down a PL Coddle. Well, we don't know for sure. I imagine they've probably. I mean, they've been scrimming with their three core people for the past three months, so I imagine they've practice against strategy. I'm probably going to pick up Keep the Light as well as Darkseer, so pretty standard picks at this phase. Scandal. I imagine this is one of his most comfortable offlane heroes as Keep going to make up the Shadowing and Konka, so let's just go with it. Go with what we're good with and try to win our first series Empire. We'll see how they respond as in the first game Konka was run as mid soul, Shadowing was run as safe lane, tri lane with occasional roam. We'll see if they do that again if Empire decides to pick up something like a Puck and hopefully Vigas can hopefully play the puck a bit better, or maybe they're going to pick up a more dynamic mid that can have an impact earlier on, or maybe a you safer mid. You can't play puck against Nyx Assassin mid, you'll seconds, get destroyed mid, seconds, and then what happens in the mid game is you blink on the team and you drop the Dream Coil, but uh, Nyx turns on his Reflect before the Dream Coils actually hits you, but Sing and Sing then is, you're stunned. Sing Sing is the Kunkka player, and I think he only plays Kunkka mid. I've never seen him play Kunkka in the safe lane. 
Okay, well, either way, uh, so maybe you'll do fine mid, but then you're still with that problem of getting reflected and then interrupted in your combo and just killed before you can finish it. That is definitely true. I'm probably going to pick up Lower Bane's hero in the form of Gyrocopter. I don't think this will be a mid cell Gyrocopter. I think this will be a safe lane farming Gyrocopter because Vigos, I've never seen him play Gyrocopter. I've seen Lower Bane play Gyrocopter many, many times. Is Cupad going to get rid of the PL? So, smart ban. Again, Gyrocopter could have the option to go mid. Could also be a support, even though we've seen that fade out very, very recently. Or not very recently. You've just seen that fade off the face of the earth in recent times. And Empire, we'll see what they decide to ban out. Waga is still yet to pick up his hero. And Cupad, I think they need a select hero. So Waga and Select still need their hero. So Empire, Ten I think uh, Void could be a strong option here because Void was just given complete free farm. Unless they really want to pressure him with an aggressive trial in. Oh man, Void would be sick. It gives you an answer for Keeper of the Light because you jump on him. And, you know, all of a sudden he's not safe from a million miles away. And it works really, really well with Kanka. So... I think Void would actually be a pretty sick pickup, um, and I don't think Empire right now has the heroes to pressure it successfully. Yeah, I mean, we saw in game one, where Waga just got absolute free farm, and once Kunkka got 40 second boats, they could throw down Chronosphere on one target and just use boat every single fight, because 40 second cooldown boat is pretty sick, not gonna lie. But yeah, Empire... I remember when that got patched, I kind of said that, oh, Kunk is one of the real winners of this patch, I think that he'll be picked up, and then he wasn't, and I was wrong, but every time we see him, which is basically, in the last two games, he's been pretty effective, so. I think Southeast Asian teams run him, like, once every month, but pretty much it's only, <laughs> and Ishii has run him maybe once a month. I think Navi ran him once as well, but in total, Radiant. it's pretty much Cupad doing it. Uh, but Empire gonna ban out Clockwork as well as Bear, so they are really wary of getting select a good hero at this moment. So, I don't know. What will you can play? run. You can run a Nyx offlane solo because of reflect and it's going to work really well against the keeper of the light because that's all he can contribute to killing nyx and it's going to get reflected so all of a sudden he's not killing nyx anymore and gyro's not that great against him either right uh because if you try to whatever it's called uh nuke him down it's going to get reflected which won't damage you but you'll get stunned and then he'll run away so you can offlane solo the nyx teams aren't doing this right now but it doesn't mean it's not an option and uh, obviously, Wagamama and Sing Sing are going to know this and, you know, have that on the table. So, Cupad, gonna make a decision right here. They're gonna pick up the Void, saying it worked in game one, and Empire, like you mentioned, don't really have a lineup that can really pressure us at this point. And keep in mind, in game one, Cupad also had Chen, so it was Void and Shadowdeon for the most part, and Shadowdeon roamed from time to time. So, if they pick up another support, then Empire really can't challenge them with their lanes. I mean, keep it like Gyrocopter is very, very potent at throwing out a lot of damage, but you have disruption, you have time walk, you have a lot of escape mechanisms, and Cupad have yet to pick up their last support, so Empire might be a bit wary of running aggressive Chine, but I think the fact of the matter is that they know they didn't pressure Waga at all in game one. If they don't pressure him now, then they might be completely done, because Void will just Chrono Jaro and destroy him. Yeah, and we might see a dual roam from Nick Shadow Demon. Obviously, Nyx isn't a great roamer because you kind of want to be sitting in lane mana burning people. But with a Shadow Demon, it, it allows him to set up his stun. And we could really just see the same thing with Nyx replacing Chen. You know, we might... No, we can't see the same exact lineup because uh, Clock isn't in it, but... Yep, Clock was removed from the pool. Empire taking a lot of time. I think they must have known this was coming. This is three of the heroes that they saw in game one. I mean, not too sure. I guess they really need to decide where they're going to challenge it out. They're going to pick up Warlock, so it's going to be Warlock mid -soul. I guess this is this is a good pick in terms of fighting 5v5 engagements, because as it is right now, they don't really have that good of an opening. But now they have Darkseer Wall as well as Call Down and The Rock. So this is going to help them in 5v5 engagements. But in terms of whenever the ultimate is on cooldown, and keep in mind it's on cooldown for 165 seconds, uh... Cupad should have an opening because their ultimates go down a lot more rapidly in the late stages of the game. Ten seconds. Ten yeah, seconds that's very remaining. true. And if if Empire doesn't pick up a support Naga Siren seconds. right now, I'm going to be so sad remaining. because to me, that's the perfect pick. Stops Konka from hitting you, um, interrupts the Chrono combo, and allows you yourself to set up a Warlock, Darkseer, Keeper of the Light call down. Why wouldn't you get it? It's, uh, okay, I don't know. Um, I really favor that hero as a support. I don't think it's a carry at all. Um, don't think it's really capable of carrying, but as a support, I think it's the perfect pickup right now for them. 
well, I don't think I've never seen Empire run in Naga. I don't think we'll see him start, but it makes a lot of sense. Again, Song and Siren, people just underestimate it now because it has been nerfed and because Naga's cast animation is like 10 years. But still, it's ridiculously big AoE. It stops a lot of damage from coming through. It can actually outlast the Kunkka boat. So, I mean, that's definitely a solid mechanism so you can actually deal full damage. And then, like you mentioned, Darkseer, as, even though it's not brain dead anymore with the invulnerable vacuum, it's still Two teams can execute it exactly yeah, the same. Yeah, it's still, time. you know, it's just the same time. cancel an ultimate and then you drop the vacuum. It's not that difficult. Uh, Secure Bad going to pick up the Brewmaster. So this is, I guess, Select's hero now. Um, Yeah, and it's going to be a dual roam, it looks like. Uh, they. Oh, you know what it might be? They might be aggressive tri-laning with the Brewmaster in it and leaving Void on his own on bot lane. And then if they themselves get aggressive tri lane on, they just rotate the supports down and have Brewmaster solo. Well, That's Brewmaster what I is also a hero who can actually de do decently well in an offlane. Maybe not against this offlane, where they have the stun and the illuminate, and he's not that mobile with no stun himself. But he's tanky, he can soak up a lot of damage, but I'm going to be inclined to agree with you. They're going to rotate and see how the lanes will be presented, and... Oh my god, guys, select with the micro hero. Perfect. Jakiro's a great pickup, too, because of the, uh... Oh man, this is a sick lineup. I'm not going to say Empire outdrafted them, but I'm going to say I like their draft a lot. Uh, it's cool. Every it's a lot hero, of team fight. It all works with vacuum so well. And the way this is going to be executed is Ice Path drops first, then Scandal vacuums them onto the Ice Path, and then they all die. Ostensibly. That's how, that's how it should work, but we'll see. Well, the question is, how fast can Brewmaster get his dagger? If Brewmaster gets his dagger at an appropriate place, I mean, keep in mind, Boat and Torn have long range, so they might not even need to sort of expose themselves to a vacuum ice path combination but still if they ever get vacuumed ice path and to rock into everything they might not even need rock with all the damage that's being pumped out in the early stages of the game if they can hold on to more of the ultimates that can allow them to take another team fight much more quickly but anyway time to introduce the players and teams good luck have fun is the call by scandal but on the side of qpad we're gonna have waga playing the void once again select is going to be playing the brewmaster sing sing is playing the kunkka mini is going to be playing the nyx assassin and jirax is playing the shadow demon and on Empire, we're going to have Goblack playing the... I'm sorry, did you just introduce Empire? I, I couldn't no, hear you. No, I introduced Keypad. Phew, okay. That was close. We have Goblack on the Keeper of the Light. We're going to have Vigos on Warlock. We're going to have SS playing Twin Head Dragon. Blow Your Brain on the Gyrocopter. And finally, Scandal on the... It looks like a mid-darks here. Interesting. Interesting. As... In terms of Warlock picks, it's been pretty much three teams. It's been Dig and Tuss, which run it reasonably frequently with Fogged, and they've had good success, but although teams have figured out you can split push against it, it's been Empire, who were obliterated by that combination but against Dig and Tuss several times, so they're like, why not pick it up ourselves, apparently? And EG's run it once or twice, but these are the only three teams I've ever seen run Warlock. And I've not actually seen... I mean, Safely on Warlock seems to make a lot of sense. He's not a natural bottle carrier, and he doesn't anticipate getting pressured. And they're yeah. going to have to apply a lot of pressure in this bottom lane against Void. This is a mistake they made in game one. They don't want to make it again in game three. Yeah, and right now it looks like Mini might get gone on. No, he's going to get defensive disrupted. Or, well, protected by the disruption. And they'll just back up. Yep, so we're going to see Warlock versus Select. And in terms of this matchup, imagine... It's heavily in uh, Warlock's favor. Yeah, but I imagine Warlock can't kill Select. No, you can just... You get him low enough so that he can't ever go on you, and if he tries to push up on you, you just... You can kill him. So it forces Panda to just kind of stay in experience range. Have you ever seen this matchup before, or are you just... Uh... I've done it in the mid lane. Um, My friend drafted it against me in an in-house, and I was playing the Pandas, and it wasn't... Like, I got experience, and I got some farm, but it wasn't... Like, I thought that it would be much more in my favor, and it wasn't. It might be different on the sideline, though. I don't know. So, so far, just checking out the last hit. Void, only one last hit, but it hasn't even been a minute into the game. We'll see how this trial develops. As so far, some wards being placed on the side of Empire, blocking off the pull spot. And any sentries, Jax does have a sentry, as he counter-warded in an odd position. He was anticipating the sort of hidey hole ward that has become more common, but just some mind games he played, played by Empire. So now, the dual supports are going to roam mid. They are going to pop a smoke, and Scandal does not have knowledge of this, but he does have Surge as Sig Sig does have a point to Torrent, and the question is whether they can chain their stuns appropriately. If they do so, Scandal, 700 HP, actually, I don't know, he might be able to survive it without Soulcatcher. Uh, it'll be close either way. I can't say 
whether or not it's going to happen correctly or not. But it looks like they're going to change their mind and say, hey, probably not. Let's just go for Warlock instead. Yeah, and what's happening on top lane right now is sort of what I talked about. Select's already taking a good amount of harass, and Warlock is not... He hasn't been touched, so... But Warlock one of the easiest heroes in the game to gank, especially in the early game where no counter teleports can come in to save you without an ultimate. Only has the heal to really sustain himself. And now, Mini and Jerax going to show themselves, but Waga, he's not being driven off. He's not afraid. He's getting level 3. This is a big mistake by Empire, as here comes the engaged Select. Going to drop the clack. Clap onto Warlock. He's going to heal through the disruption. A bit of mistiming by Jerax. He's going to actually get blocked in place. Here comes the impale. A couple more hits. We'll seal the deal. One more hit. Select does pick up the first blood. And Warlock, one of the easiest heroes in the game to gank when he doesn't have his ultimate online. Meal Empire, a bit surprised. They allowed Waga to pick up four last hits and reach level three. Not really what you want to have happen. Yeah, not at all. That's really... Ugh. It's bad. If you have a faceless board... Oh, Scandal managed to snipe the courier. Nicely done with the surge as well as Iron Shell. And, I mean, Sing Sing got his bottle, but now he can't bottle crow. And that is very significant for a melee here. He's going to have to push the lane very aggressively and try to contest the runes now that he doesn't have the easy access into the bottle courier. And he's not... If, if he gets a rune, it'll be his supports who got it for him, not him. You can't push a lane out against a dark seer with points and shell. It just doesn't happen. But yeah, I was going to say, Wagamama's three and a half. That's not good. Oh, top lane, another. They baited out the heal onto Select to do a bit more damage over time, and supports were just like, surprise, and got the kills, and man, oh, Q pad that supports. Stout shield. That Stout Shield just saved him. The last tower hit uh, the Stout Shield procced. Lucky Select. Nah, dude, 60%. That's, you know, it's a bit of luck. Calculate it. More Calculate. often than not, it's not really <laughs> luck. <laughs> Calculated, like we mentioned. But yeah, these supports of Q-Pad, in the games we always see Q-Pad do well in, it's always the supports. Mini and Jerax really just seem to be on top of the game at this moment. And Warlock, you know, not having a good time. And at this rate, oh, Mini's going to get driven off the lane. And unfortunately for Select, he was driven so low HP and without any courier, he has to go back to base. So that's going to give Warlock some time to regain some of his losses as well. Was not expecting Nyx to actually die right there. I saw the harassment, but didn't expect him to die, but the boots was able to propel him to a kill. And meanwhile, Nyx without boots... Not that good, and no spike carapace either. Yeah, no. Normally, you don't really want to get that until level four as the support nix in most situations, because you really need the mana burn up, right? And you really want the level uh, two stun. So, Meow Void, his CS has snow slowed significantly, and he has managed to hit level four. Experience growth has slowed significantly as well. At least he's even at the jail counter, so. Supports on Empire, even though they're not rowing, but speak of, speaking of Rome, disruption going in. Sing Sing gonna time the Torrent. Will match hit Scandal on just the edge. Mabern gonna fly in as well as an Impale. These supports by Q Pad making everything happen. Yeah. And at this point, I think Empire really made a mistake in not protecting their mid and safe lanes with a, a sentry. Because that picks up the smoke, and um, if just even two of those kills are prevented, this game is looking a lot differently right now. You know, that's some of the mind games. Waga just destroyed them by farming up. They said, screw Waga, we're not going to let them happen again. But now the sports are able to roam so much more freely now that the pull spot, you know, it's worn out, but they're not pulling. And Waga's still finding a way to get experience because, I don't know, Top Empire lane. sports are always scared. As meanwhile, there's going to be engaged in select. Might get very well bursted down. Another stout shield block. As, no, that was a drunken haze. Warlock does pick up the kill. That was very much needed. As now Warlock will be out to hit level 6 before select does. Yeah, and he's going for the phase boots on Warlock, which, I'm going to be honest, I kind of like phase boots on Warlock. Um, your auto attacks are very, very significant, and with the amount of damage coming out from your um, damage over time, it you just hurt people. Like, you actually turn yourself into sort of a semi-game, or semi-carry mid-game-ish with the phase boots, so I like it. Also, oh, he may be fearing the ganks, just wants to get himself out a little bit more safe with the movement speed and the phase boots have been fish. The question is whether he goes for mech. I imagine Scan will go for mech as he is already working well towards that. No, has a soul ring gonna be in his back pocket soon enough. So I think Scan will go mech and Warlock will probably just rush Aghanims and Yeah, you'll go straight Ag's refresher is what I'm expecting. But now Waga, level 5. Meanwhile, Boyerbane, not having that good of a time, picked up the phase, which is going to clear up an ancient stack. So I guess that's what this Empire Sports have been doing. Meanwhile, Sing Sing, on the other hand, is level 6, has 3 points in the Tidemakers. And Meanwhile, on the other hand of the equation, uh, Scandal is level 7, as you're going to see more smoke attempt by the Q-Pad Sports. The question is, do Empire have enough to react to it? 
do their supports have TP scrolls because Jakiro will just die. He is very low in terms of HP. And Keep of the Light, no TP scroll on him just yet. As no, they're gonna ban the top one idea, saying well like has ultimate, not a good idea. We'll go mid instead. Yep, and Scandal's almost certainly dead right here. Soulcatcher yeah. into Torrent, into Tiber, into Impel. This combo has probably been executed in scrimmages dozens and dozens, at least hundreds of times. And meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Waga managed to hit all six. What is Empire doing? This is a soul void. Um, when the supports left the lane, he just got farm. Like, if you look at his CS, he's at 17 CS, which is much more than he should have. He should have like five tops. But Empire didn't leave the lane until very late, and Keep It Light is still in the lane. This is, I don't know, big mistake by Empire in my opinion. And at least they're delaying Waga's farm, so they don't have to deal with that for quite a bit. And that might, you know, that's good for their mid game team fight, but still, Void should probably be at least driven back to the base at least once. I mean, all you're going to really need from him early game anyway is the Chrono into Kanka, who's going to be dealing the damage. He doesn't deal damage until late anyway. It's not a big deal that he doesn't have farm. It is a big deal that you let him get Chrono up before 8 minutes. That's the issue. You know, on the other side of the equation, Select does have a TP as well as that Primal Split, so if they want to engage on Waga, they might have to mess with Select. Mew on the other side of the equation, Warlock is going to go for the Mechanism instead. Interesting, as Scandal's farm was shut down quite heavily, especially by those dual ganks, so I guess they want to get the Mechanism up because Empire's lineup very strong in the mid-game, but they really, I mean, late game void. They have a really good team fight, but still, do you want to take the chance against a late game void with a 165 second cooldown? No. No one wants to play late game against Void, even if you do have the Gyrocopter. It's just... He, you can't kill him. Oh, Disruption is going to be on the Rune camp as Golbak is going to be stunned. Place Torrent is going to fly in as well. Soul Catcher by Jax will help M5 damage as Torrent. How much damage it does? I think it does like 325 at max level. At About level 3, 300. 240. And what level is Soul Catcher? Level 2. That is a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage indeed. And right now, I think Panda is just in control of this game. Their Empire doesn't really have any ganking support, so I don't know what they're going to really do to try to start taking back map control by getting solo picks. Well, Blurman has been farming Ancient, so he's getting a lot of gold from that. Uh, 40 CS, but he has to be careful. Waga might be able to kill him. What level are Waga? He had managed to max bash, so if he gets a couple bash on a Chrome 3, he can probably kill Blower Brain, but still doesn't want to teleport into a tower against a Warlock who has a TP scroll. But at the very least for Empire, they're going to have to mechanism up in about 450 gold, where they might be able to make a push happen, or at least force the team fight engagement. Yeah, and you got all robot-y for me, be bone so just talk for a little bit until your internet connection clears up. Your or mine, that is. Yep, so Blue Rain just can continue to stack. And just checking out the level select, not yet level 7. Going to probably go for Arcane Boots, and me all the top tower is getting pressured, but still... Without the ultimates being casted, Empire's push is not really their strong suit. They're going to allow Brewmaster to pick up a lot of experience from these sort of engagements. As the support's going to camp the bottom lane, might very well get Disruption. They're going to cast a Disruption onto Jakiro. Here comes the Impale. The Warlock ultimate has been thrown down, but where is the chasing potential going to come from? Ice Hath just managed to stack many, but the Warlock Golem is not in place. The boots of speed picked up the supports will allow them to escape with ease. And that is huge. Yeah. That's a big deal. I can't even begin to emphasize how big a deal that is. So much was committed to that, and nothing came of it, so... I mean, they're gonna get a tower, but... Okay, it's a tower. You're gonna have Sig Sig to farm up. You're gonna have Brewmaster to get some levels back, and now they have Brewmaster ultimate in the bag where you're lacking a Warlock ultimate. This is not looking good for Empire. At the very least, they're gonna have the mechanism up, I imagine. Yeah, they're gonna have the mechanism up with this tower, so... They can probably fight a team fight if they really have to, but... They're gonna not actively look for one. No, you don't want to fight when the golem's down. You just don't do it. Uh, but the good news is Wagamama can actually solo pick anybody who tries to farm against him. Because like you mentioned, um, with the recent change in Warlock's Bash, or I don't know if it was in Bash or in Chrono, but basically the double damage being dealt off a of Bash when you're in there means you get 140 damage if you bash somebody in Chronosphere. Which means if one person tries to farm against you, you're just going to get Chronoed and die. Um, I thought it was a really great balance change, but the point is it means you have to commit two people to stopping him farm instead of just one, which means Sing Sing's going to get farmed. So it's really like pick your poison at this point. Cupad using another smoke yet again. I imagine they're out of smoke stock for a bit. Yeah, they're going to be out of smoke for the next 11 minutes. 
but they have been mostly used to great effect as they've definitely kept back the opposing sides. But Empire gonna group up, try to apply pressure on the middle lane, but Sing Sing is there for Torn as well as Tidemere splashes. The top tower is gonna get pressured, the question is, does anybody want to defend it? As without the ultimate of the Warlock, they really don't want to teleport in one by one. This is just a very, very scary situation for Empire, they might have to trade. Yeah, and I think a trade's actually going to benefit them, because if they can get a tower when Rock is down, um, I see that as a victory. Especially mid-tower, which is more important than their own safe tier 1 tower. No, it looks like both teams are going to back off. Cupad backing off once they saw Empire not in mid lane anymore, and Empire backing off once they saw the tower being pressured so severely. As Blurbane just continue to kill those Ancients, we'll have that Shadow Blade up very, very soon, as 50 cents yes, but a lot of those happen ancient gold, so he's going to have a very fast shadow blade indeed, as Mill Tower will get pressured. Here comes the torrent flying in from Sing. He already used the boat to cut out a creep plate, but it will be up in about 20 seconds. The question is, will they be able to defend this tower? They will not, as a free tower being given to Empire. And meanwhile, the top tower is going to get defended. There comes the teleport in by the Warlock, who does not yet have his ultimate, but is back up just now. So Empire getting a tower for free, and they're going to deny the top tower. Nice maneuvers. Yeah, I think Cupan has made a fairly large mistake when they tried to back off that tower. Um, it's okay, oh, they're going to get Goldwax. Like 3 3 might be gone on. Uh, stun, Panic Lap, and that is death with many picking up the last hit. Battle Bond's being used and actually managed to hit neutral, so Warlock just going to rest on neutral. Do a little bit of parting shots to the Brewmaster as well as the Nyx. But yeah, they don't have Keeper Light. But they still have all their ultimates up. This might be the chance for Empire to get another push going. But all the while, Void is farming up. We'll probably go for the Maelstrom like he did in the last game. Not going to go for the Minus at this stage. Already a low 9. Doesn't really need the experience that greatly. So Maelstrom, probably a strong item in this situation. Yeah, why not? I mean, it really does let you split push. I mean, Battle Fury does too. But it gives you more in the Chronosphere. Again, I think I mentioned this in two casts ago. But if you don't have a group up spell... I think Maelstrom is just almost always superior to Battle Fury. Especially since Empire, no signs of making a pipe anytime soon. Scandal managed to get... Well, he's holding on to 1k gold. The question is what he decides to do with it. As Jakiro going to stack some camps. Uh, they're going to stack camps for Gyrocopter, but he can't really farm them all at this stage. He's only level 8, despite getting a lot of gold. So that's a bit troubling for Empire. But that's also due to the fact that they're staying so heavily grouped up. But the... Two towers were cleaned up on the side of Empire. The question is, was the middle tower denied? Both towers are denied, so that's only 1k gold going in the way of Q-Pad, but I don't think they mind that much. Yeah, it's no big deal. I mean, Q-Pad's more than happy to just play a passive game. I'd be extremely happy to play a passive game if I had a Void on my team. And Empire doesn't seem to really want to push the envelope, which I'm going to question that decision. I think that they... They can't really play aggressive is the thing um, without their, all their big ultimates up and in the same place. And if they're in the same place, it means Void's off farming. So maybe their draft isn't as good as I liked uh, initially. Yeah, one of these sort of... Oh, Scandal. Gonna take a lot of energy. They're gonna drop a split as well. They want to go on Warlock. We'll see the select micro. He's gonna windwalk and run away knowing that at this point Warlock was too close to the tower. So that ultimate... Not useful at all, but still drove away Empire as Sing Sing was able to kill off Goldback. Did not see that coming. Managed to get a solo kill on the Keeper of the Light. And Keeper of the Light at this stage just managed to tell all six. I was about to say, he has been level 5 for quite a while. But Sing Sing, gonna have that Shadow Blade fish and now he can start going for some big items. And that might very well start halting Empire's push because you can't push if all your towers are being pushed with a Maelstrom as well as some massive amounts of cleave. And this is how you fight Warlock, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you just don't fight him. <laughs> it, it seems to be counterintuitive, but you just never, ever, ever go head-to-head -head with him because you're going to lose engages against him, so why even bother? Disruption going on the middle lane. That is going to be Scandal. He's not going to get torrented. Cupad just going to back off. They saw the teleport in. It was just Cupid Light. But now Cupad have a lot of map control. Well, yeah, they have a lot of map control because Empire taking two towers. But Void more than happy to just farm the safe lane while he's being protected by supports. And... Yeah, Cupad just always in the enemy team's jungle. Yeah. Um, it, I think it really is. Um, when you don't really have stuns, or, or as I like to call it, skirmish power, where you're good at fighting people in like 2v2 situations or like 3v2 or something, Empire doesn't have that, and Cupad does. So, 
Empire really only wants to take the big team fights, which obviously, as I've said so far too many times now, Cupad doesn't want to. But it looks like Empire's trying to force the issue now. Finally, they're going to try to push this tower, and if they want a team fight, they're going to get the next one too. Yeah, Brewmaster Ultimate's cooling down. It has a, such a long cooldown, 160 seconds at level 1. So, yeah, Empire should probably push in. Void is going to be pushing the bomb tower all the while. They're going to force the teleport back by Bullet Brain. But I imagine Recall will be in pursuit. Nice denied by Select as Ice Path is going to fly in. Here comes the vacuum back into Ice Path. By Ice Path actually wore off. That is huge. It's a boat debuff. Going to allow Cupad to survive so much sustainability. Keep it by Eliminate. Going to fly and pick off two heroes as the Golem just proving to be too powerful in this engagement. And Void gonna teleport back being driven away successfully with a bullet brain. And recall, you know, that's just what Void that's just what Kivalite does, among other things. Yeah, he's uh Well, I think we've learned about him enough. But yeah, this is why you don't want to actually take a team fight against Empire, because you got murdered. I mean And keep in just... mind the ice path actually wore off as soon as the vacuum was casted. Yeah, they messed up. They didn't execute it like they should have, um, on a couple of different levels, and they still won by a huge amount. So I honestly would have just sacrificed those two towers and had my carries keep farming, but I think uh, Q-Pad in the future will do so. And just want to talk about sort of a subtle thing with Warlock. If you're using Warlock in a losing situation, you drop the ultimate, the golem dies. You're going to be without the ultimate. Uh, I'm going to cut you off. It looks yep. like uh, Twin Head Dragon's going to die. Uh, Select Stagger is almost up. He is going to go on him. There's going to be the clap. But he goes in way too far. Uh, his team is not behind him. I'm pretty sure he's going to die. No, he is going to split, so they're completely committed to this engage. Uh, Illuminate comes and hits two people. Uh, Vygos is on a killing spree. One down so far. Uh, Gyrocopter is just cleaning up those pandas. Only the Earth one left. Will it die? There's going to be a Chronosphere and he has oh, got his lightning now. So he's dealing a lot of damage. There's going to be a ship coming. Oh my dear lord. Uh, that's going to be three down, four down, and Scandal's going to get cleaned up. So, wow, that was a really good turnaround. I'm impressed. Waga Mama, ladies and gentlemen, waiting for the perfect opportunity. Other players would have just cast a Chronosphere on one or two at the beginning, but he waited for his time, and he struck with a vengeance. And with the boat in place, it's going to be a team life, like you mentioned. So now suddenly Empire not looking as good. I mean, they did the right thing, which is retreat as five once they pick up the towers, but still, Select chased him down, and he distracted them long enough for Waga to get in position, drop the Chronosphere. And I was going to talk about Warlock for a second. I was going to say, you know, Warlock in defense situation, he's good, but... The Warlock Golem will die, and you're going to be without it for the next 150 seconds, most likely. But in the offensive situation where you win a team fight, you're going to have that Golem up for much longer, and the fact that the opponents are dead means the cooldown seems much less shorter. But now it's null and void. As soon as the Golem died, they struck, and with that Chronosphere, the epic music takes in. Chronosphere ain't no joke, b -Wallen. That is a good spell. Man, this epic music. <laughs> just I, yeah, I just kind of want to listen to it. Let's not say anything. Let's listen to this for a minute or two. D why is it, it it just kicks in at 20 minutes? Is it always like this? Because I always have my uh, music muted. I think it's just before. recently. Okay. Yeah, because I, I never heard it before, so I was a little bit surprised. The first time I heard it, you're like, epic music is coming. I'm like, whatever, bro. And then it came in, and I was like, oh my god, this is really cool. <laughs> anyway, uh, boat's going to fly in. Scandal's going to get hit. Boat really doesn't accomplish anything. And that's a ward, questionable ward. Right in front of the sentry. And this is a key moment for Empire. They have level 11, they have Warlock Ultimate up. This is the key moment where they want to do as much damage as possible. Nice and pale coming in from Mini, getting it two people. The Soul Catcher is on Scandal, and he does not want to take too much damage, otherwise he will just die, but the boat is not up. If they can get this tower without dropping the ultimate, that will be a huge victory for the side of Empire. Meanwhile, Void, more than happy to take this time to farm up. And this might be a way to combat this Warlock, just Chronosphere him at the beginning of the fight, but still, at this point, Void, not that tanky, so he's just going to farm very, very safely, not going to rely on his teammates to defend this tower, and so far the teammates doing a decent job, Empire might be forced to retreat at this stage. I'm not sure. Um, I think Void is going to try to defend it. He TP's away from farming when he could have been split pushing a tower. Uh, Select is rotating in with level 12 and the level 2 Brewmaster yeah. Ultimate. He picks up his BKB component, so he's fully committed to this fight, like, completely. He wants every last bit of damage he can get, and it looks like he's just going to leap in and chrono. Mini. Oh, the sentry order's dropped at the worst time. Vacuum into Ice Path. At least Vacuum's on cooldown for the next 20 seconds. Mini will end up sacrificing his life. No, the Brew Mass Alta is in place. The Chronosphere, a little bit weirdly placed as it doesn't catch a walk. The boat is going to fly in as well, going to give the deep minus... The debuff on everybody on the side of Q-Pad, or the buff, as Golbat going to be hunted down, and Warlock Ultimate 
really not that good when everybody's just running around with the pandas flying in with the Wagamamas leaping in with Sing Sing's running in and Vigos will get clean up and I don't know Empire that was they had the ultimate they used it I think that vacuum once they, they saw the vacuum a little bit wrong initially they, they kind of clumped a little bit too much more than you want to against avoid Kanka so I think that's kind of where the problem came from yep and vacuum used on the Knicks they didn't even kill the Knicks did they Nope. No, they did. They did. they did. They did. Oh, he did. They did. Okay. So I guess they didn't come away totally fruitless. Empire, this is the point of the game where their ultimates are at the strongest, but so far, it's not looking that good for them. But still, I mean, this ultimate combination is so strong that it can pretty much be handled even to the late stages of the game, uh, as long as Gyrocopter has sufficient farm that he can sort of stay away. And Vigos' positioning was magnificent in that team fight engagement. Stood right on top of the little cliff towards the small camp and was away from the pan ultimate, was away from the void ultimate, dropped the rock on the void in the chronosphere, but unfortunately just didn't have enough backup damage or any ways to keep the team fight in place once Shakiro died. No, and I'm going to comment on something Vigas did that seems to be absolutely tiny, but I don't think it is. He got one point in stats, which means at level 11, he doesn't have a rank in upheaval. And I think if he had upheaval, because you know how that fight was in like a choke point and he was in the back? I think if he had just one rank in upheaval then, they, um, they being Q-Pad, they couldn't have pursued because they would have all been slowed by way too much. So while it's a tiny thing, I think it, I think that, you know, a decision he made at level 2 to get a rank in stats lost them that team fight. I think the team fight was already lost. I think uh, could have been. Sing Sing with the torrent would have been out to disrupt it, void match get another time. Oh yeah, time. you know what, I completely forgot about that. So yeah, you're probably right. But it's level 12 now. We'll see if he gets another point. It looks like he went back in the stats. I think he just really fears Sing Sing. As well as uh, maybe he knew NA was coming back. Maybe I think the Brewmaster was still online for the most part. I think it was. So they could have chased him down. There's just so many mechanisms to bypass the team fight of Empire once the Ice Path and the Vacuum have been used. It's not even funny. Yeah, Brewmaster was really good against Warlock to begin with because you blink in on him split and you throw him up in the air and all of a sudden you can take down like a target or two before he can drop the rock. And uh, at that point, it's like, why drop the rock if you're already, you know, you've already lost the team fight. So, Brewmaster is one answer that a lot of teams like against Warlock if you're trying to fight him head on. But like you said, most teams just prefer to not fight him at all. Void finished the BKB, has it up for 10 seconds, 1100 gold in the bank, staying very cautious, knowing that this might be an opening for Empire to get back in game by smoke ganking the Waga. Yeah, and they haven't shown on the map for about 20 seconds. So, while what he's doing is wrong it's the right decision if that makes sense i mean you already have an advantage why try to give away some of that advantage even with the 10 second bkb he might have been out he would have been able to escape from any scenario but still i mean why risk your 10 second bkb it's your most important bkb charge as you can just use that to single-handedly wipe a team fight meanwhile blow your brain the unsung person on the side of empire sacking ancients not too much gold let's check out the gpm uh, 447. I guess that's a product of all the towers and the Roshan they took? I guess it is. Uh, and you know what? I think probably about 50 of that is from Ancients. And I think he's going to get BKB next. Because you don't want to get you don't want to get blinded by the pandas. You don't want to get stuck in... Uh, if you get disabled by one of the three disabling people, um, the other ones are just going to chain everything on you. So I would imagine a BKB is coming out next from him. Oh man, here comes a smoky gank party. The illusion is gonna scout out. Oh man, I guess Blurry Brain knew something was up when he saw the illusion approach so aggressively, or he just noticed that hey, nobody on Cupia is farming, even though we don't have wards in their jungle. So the smoke is gonna be wasted for now, but it's okay. Gonna stop Blurry Brain from farming for just a bit. BKB has been fished up on the gyrocopter, and yeah, it's a necessity that even though you can get chronosphered. You just really can't get thrown up in the air for 10 seconds at a time during one Brewmaster Ultimate. You can't get NA impaled for 2.75 seconds. You can't get boated and torrented. There's just so many disables. Yeah, and he's continuing to stack Ancients. So, Blow Your Brain really is farming well. It's just the rest of his team, I don't know. We're going to have an Ag Scepter up on DS. We're going to have an Ag Scepter up. Is it finished? Yeah, it is on Warlock. Um, but... There isn't anything else. Like, aside from their big ultimates, which they're completely built around, they have Blow Your Brain and that's it. Well, double ultimate on the Warlock is probably the scariest thing ever. I mean, can't really count the number of times where I've been losing 
very, very drastic. Well, this is pubs. This is completely different. But you get the Arganims up on Warlock, and then suddenly you win the game for some unforeseen reason. Just does so much damage. But yeah, this is. I don't think, unless Rapier is picked up by Gyrocopter, this is the strongest Empire is going to get. They need to make something happen. Otherwise, the Void still don't want to deal with them, and he has 10 seconds of BKB. Rapier is not even a good item choice for him in this situation. Oh, Minnie's going to not get the courier, but he's going to try. Yeah, you can't get a Rapier, because if you get a Rapier, you have to BKB. Otherwise, you'll get blinded, and if you BKB, Void's going to jump on you, chrono you, and kill you. So he needs an MKB and a Rapier if he wants to, you know, solo carry it like that. If I was him, though, I'd just go for the MKB. And a Satanic. And a Butterfly. And yeah. a Rapier while you're at it, right? <laughs> Why not? As Mask of Madness has been picked up on Waga, he's saying he's pretty tanky. He can switch to Treads of Strength. He has the BKB up. He has Chronosphere. And he's, interesting enough, not going to see for buyback. But... Yeah. He made a weird decision before with that when he bought parts of the BKB before a fight and it brought him down to 200 gold. Like, I was really confused by that. But, uh, I guess he just feels so confident that this one item will push me over the edge, so I cannot die if I do this. So, well, it's a legitimate decision, but you just have to know yourself. Radiant have a pretty significant experience of edge, 7.5k. Empire have a gold advantage on the back of the towers in the Roshan, as here comes the torrent. He's trying to bait out the BKB. This is a common Kunkka tactic, but Empire Boyerbrain just saying, why use the BKB? I have Aegis. going to get healed up. He's out of mana. He might get felled by the tower. Here comes the usage of the Chronosphere by Waka. He's going to decimate the side of Empire, but the Golems in the background are going to pick off the Shadow Demon. Meanwhile, Boyerbrain going to activate the BKB, but he's getting bashed. He's getting bashed. He's getting bashed again. And now Kunkka will be on the pursuit. Mini trying to get his stun going, but the BKB was 10 seconds on the side of Gyrocopter as well. And Boyerbrain can't do it by himself. He cannot. Illuminate, on the other hand, can. Godblack number one Coddle in the world. His Illuminates always just kill people, and Select will fall. Uh, Kunkas has fought back at this point. We see Sing Sing on the retreat, but I think he's going to get away. Maybe. Oh, he's manning up on Scandal. Wow. Oh, dear lord. Oh, man. Sing Sing, Gladiator, Dota at its best as Scandal, Tower Shot. Oh, the Shadow Poison as well as the Tower Shot. Shadow <laughs> got the last hit on that, as that was a 4 for 4. Four, four for five, four for four with the buyback, I guess. I think Cube, Cube had one with the final pickoff. I think it was enough to kind of give them the advantage. But let's see what the graphs say after that fight, because I'm actually curious. I haven't looked yet. Well, goal graph going to go slightly up. Experience graph staying very stable. I guess it was even, but I don't know. That was an Empire Aegis fight with Blurbane 10 second BKB and Warlock first ultimate with the double golem online. Empire. If all things were in a perfect situation, they should have team wiped that. But just the Brewmaster Ultimate and Chronosphere is just like the ultimate counter to these sort of all uh, these sort of team fight lineups. You just pick off one of those components of the team fights, and then suddenly the team fight gets so much less fearful. Yeah, it really is. Um, I would have to say that Wagamama is right now the reason why his team is winning. He got farm when he shouldn't have. He kind of scraped that together. Uh, he hit some really sick chronos, which led to him winning team fights that he shouldn't have. And right now, he's gotten farm when he's been pressured, and he's continuing to just dominate in team fights. Like he made two decisions that I thought would have been bad with uh, buying parts of items and not having buyback, but it ended up working really well. So right now, he's my MVP. Also, sports dorm room helped out quite a bit, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. It but... worked really well. I mean, Empire definitely not out of it. I don't think... Well, I think the vacuum wall... Yeah, they managed to get a vacuum wall. No, actually, I don't... I'm not sure, because I think the wall was dropped so late, because I remember at the end of the fight, uh, Select got sucked in. So if Empire get a better wall setup, they might be in this game. As here comes Mini with initiation. Going to get driven back by Vigos. The ultimate is not yet online for Vigos just yet. We'll be up right about now. And he has 2.1k in gold in the bank. The question is, does he want to go for a refresher or maybe something else? Maybe a Ghost Scepter could be quite useful in this situation. I see no reason to not get a refresher. When you're completely based around team fights, I think that's you just have to make sure Ooh, that... He's gone for Hex. Ah, that works too. 
Oh, the smoke was spotted by Mini. As uh, Sector is going to be popped to Blurbane. Already at half HP, going to pop the BKB. Can't get anybody. It's called down. Nice cars here. Once again, Waga going to get two heroes, but the ultimate has been dropped as it's going to delay the Waga on time for quite a bit. But Blurbane is going to end up paying for it with his life. And the fatal bonds and the walk damage going to do so much. Going to be able to clean off Nyx Assassin. Shadow going to get driven back. Will be killed by the fatal bonds as well. And Meow Brewmaster popped his ultimate, but now forced to run. His dagger is being constantly canceled. Blurbane did buy back. And they're going to get the stun off. We'll clean up the Brewmaster as that was a one for two. But Blurbane did buy back. Not too sure who won that. A lot of people bought back. I don't know who, but Gyro bought back. I think he was the only one who bought Gyrocopter back. Gyrocopter and Nyx bought back. So it's actually a three for one with the Gyrocopter buyback. Yeah. So they took a fight against Empire in a choke. They've been pretty good about not doing that so far, but they kind of slipped up in that one tiny instance and they paid for it so yeah it was a weird weird situation they smoked up empire did and many dispelled it and they're just empire just panicked and when you have a warlock on the low ground when everybody else is fighting on the high ground you can just drop the ultimate get an easy easy four man fatal bonds and that fatal bonds did so much work and now blur Rain, after that team fight even though he bought back managed to pick up a yasha and is working towards his next big item so empire is showing that they still have a lot of fight left in them but I don't know, the BKB charges are starting to wear thin. Still 8 seconds, still more than enough time. And the, But the fact remains is that Waga and Sig Sig did not die. And then they're going to get only more and more scary as this game goes on. Absolutely. Waga is almost... Well, he's pretty close to his MKB. And once he has that, I think Empire is just going to have a problem, even if they get a perfect team fight. Because in the BKB direction, he can kill two people guaranteed, pretty much. This is this is why Void's a great late game carry. Like, sure, his skills are nice. Like, uh, time walk's okay. Uh, backtrack's amazing, actually, for ultra late game. Oh, Goa but. gonna run up onto the hill, trying to deward it up. He's gonna end up paying for it with his life. X gonna be used as well as the purge. Bo gonna be used as well. Gonna just be used to finish off Go Black as Sig Sig is level 19. That boat is gonna be up in 30 seconds. More than it. More than worth in that situation to kill off the Keep of the Light, and that's gonna prevent Empire from rushing without that Keep of the Light in place. So now Empire gonna have to back off, but Darkseer and Warlock are definitely strong Roshan fighters. And meanwhile, the Roshan is gonna be attempted. Waga gonna get so many bashes in place. Empire, they should try to fight this. They have Darkseer and Warlock, but the ultimate on Warlock is still 15 seconds. They can't fight this. I forgot about that. Calldown gonna be used, gonna slow down Waga's assault, and we'll delay the Roshan. Keep it like gonna buy back right now. Waga gonna time walk away to safety. They force the buyback. And they know Warlock Ultimate is cooling down very rapidly, but no, they're sticking around. They don't want to give Empire the ages. This is such a tense moment. Meow, you know, the blinking by Select gonna perhaps pop the ultimate. He's very low into his mana, but he's gonna walk in and jump at the corner. They're gonna focus down. Vigas, Vigas, no buyback. They're gonna be fighting out the Warlock Ultimate. And the bow cleaning up the kills on three of the people inside of Empire. This will be a complete massacre, but the wall is in place. Blurban getting bashed through the BKB. And this is gonna be. A huge victory for Qpad in this engagement. Wow, what a boat Chronosphere. Waga, these Chronospheres have just been phenomenal. I really like this synergy coming out from the Kunkka uh, and Void. They're, I didn't think that they would work together quite so well as they do. Obviously on paper it seems great, like, oh, you have AoE and then AoE, it works. But I thought that Kunkka wouldn't necessarily always be able to you know, get his cleave off on people, but apparently he can, because uh, there's normally someone right at either on the edge of the chronosphere which Waga is making happen or there's someone who's before the chronosphere and he just hits them and gets everybody so I thought it might not work as well as it is but obviously these guys know what they're doing so oh man I'm really really sad for Empire at this moment because uh well not sad for Empire I mean I'm really concerned for Empire I guess is more of the appropriate word because I mean they lost the team fight pretty much essentially a team wipe even though they didn't have the warlock ultimate in place but the fact of the matter is that Void now these getting more and more buff can sort of sit back and then just jump in on the Warlock and walk might have to preemptively drop his golems, but that's never a good situation as Jakiro gonna get X as well as Boated. Here comes the Torrent. SS gonna get absolutely demolished. This is the power of Boat in the late game. You can use it for solo ganks with ease. 40 second cooldown. Who cares? Yeah, it's the way I think of it is it's like Firefly to me. And I play a lot of Batrider. And do you use Firefly to farm, right? that's fine so why not use boat for you know whatever you want really use it for a solo kill use it to scare someone away use it to force a tp like do whatever you want with it it's 40 seconds 
We all select on Niagara on level 16. Brewmaster Ultimate is intact. They're going to try to focus down. Select. Nice split. Dodging the stun duration of the Warlock Ultimate. But the wall is in place. Sing Sing going to take a lot of edge. But yes, Agency does not care. Scandal being thrown up into the air. And where is the lockdown going to come from? They're just going to run away from these golems. Here comes Wara with another Chronosphere. Going to focus down Blurbane. We'll clean up Blurbane. Scandal being the next recipient. Will be cleaned up as well by the Nyx Assassin. And this looks to be curtains on the side of Empire. They might very well lose this game. They're going to get wiped yet again this is just really nice play by keypad and gg's called wow i'm impressed keypad impressed me they did better than i thought they would in all of these games so go down but keypad taking their first ever series as an official team gotta be very very Happy with their performance, but can't be too satisfied just yet. This is only the first matchup of the group stages, and they still have to face a lot of good teams like Team Liquid and Virtus Pro. Vampire are going to fall to 1-1. One one. Cubat going to be 1-0, and, and these DreamHack Invitationals are going to get a lot more interesting. Seems like everybody has a chance to win these team fights. But Empire, unfortunately, going to have to go back to the drawing board. That lineup was fully exploited for the most part. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, if they had picked out a support Naga Sauron, they would have won 20 to nothing. No Maybe doubt. not, but either way, uh, I guess when you just draft around these huge AoE lineups and they don't work, uh, you, you just get dodged, you just kind of lose. So, maybe Waga Respect Void Bands coming in, maybe more Sing Sing Respect Bands on the Kunkka. Definitely a possibility, because uh, these strategies by Qpad, really interesting, but... <laughs> Pull your brain, come back. <laughs> well, Rush everybody. GG next level. At least it's not one of those GGs where. No, I guess uh, Blair Brain's still in the game. And he's farming, so. The game actually goes on for seven more minutes, apparently. Well, let's see. I'm just going to fast forward to the end. I want to look at the final score screen. Yeah, Sam. Throne that dies. Come on, final score screen. Do your magic. Creeps are dancing. May I fast forward past the final score screen? No, nope, Radiant Victory. But yeah, thanks for watching. Dream Mac Invitational. Remember, check out twitch.tv slash thegoodstudio for the live version of these casts. Always check out the live version of the casts because those are what the tournaments directly benefit from. These replay casts are more of our guilty pleasures. But thanks for watching. Uh, any last words, Shredkid? Nope. Alright, well, sounds fun good. casting with you, so. Yep, so hopefully we'll do some more in the future, but thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace.